Hey guys, this is Amber and welcome to my channel. I am super excited to be back on YouTube. Um, it is January 8th and um, I am just so behind. I want, right after New Year's Eve, New Year's Day, I wanted to do a video but I ended up getting so sick. Um, so yes, I had a great Christmas. I hope you guys had a great Christmas. Um, my anniversary was wonderful. Uh, I end up, ended up getting um, sick uh, a few days after Christmas and then New Year's Eve I ended up getting a really, 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 really bad cold. Like I wouldn't, you guys wouldn't have even been able to understand what in the world I was saying because my nose was like super stuffy. I'm still getting over it. I, I feel like I'm kind of at the end of it. Hopefully it's going to end soon, but yeah, it's just been really bad. Um, as far as like the sickness and the bug thing going around, I know it's going around with everybody. So that is why I am super late on making this video, but just happy new year, happy 2018. And I'm super excited to be making this video with you guys to do a recap of my business. And um, I know you, I just want to give a shout out to everyone who has subscribed to my channel lately. I just want to say hello, welcome to my channel. I'm so glad that you ladies are enjoying the content. And uh, shout out to any guys that I have subscribed to my channel. Um, uh, let me just say that I feel so blessed and encouraged um, for this community that's kind of like rolling in to all my subscribers. I just want to say that I feel so blessed and it's so encouraging that you guys are watching, you guys are enjoying my channel, you guys are being encouraged. I'm inspiring you to take that leap of faith, to take that jump and open up your own lofts. Um, I know a lot of you guys um, have been saying that, you know, what I'm doing is something that you wanna do or you've been thinking about doing it or you're gonna do. And I just wanna encourage you to just go ahead and do it, you know, have faith. Go ahead and start that business, even if it's not doing hair or opening a loft, whatever it is that you want to do. Just work hard and trust God and He will definitely take care of you. So yeah, just shout out to all you guys for all the love and support that you are showing to my channel. It's greatly appreciated. Um, I appreciate each and every single one of you. And I know that I'm encouraging you, but uh, just doing this channel is very therapeutic. And uh, it's also, while I'm encouraging you, it's encouraging me and it's helping me to be mindful of how far I come. So yeah, I just want to get that out of the way. Hugs and kisses to all of you. I hope you guys are started off to a grand and great new year. If you are not starting out how you want to start, don't, um, you know, slack off or, you know, stop. Just do, just do better. Just start whenever you can start, whatever you can do when you can do it. Just do better than you did the day before. So yeah, I just want to say that to you guys. So now that we got that out of the way, um, I am going to do a recap of 2017 concerning me opening up my business. I'm super excited to do this for you guys because I just want to encourage you and let you know that if I can do it, you can do it. So if you are new to my channel, my name is Amber Mellon. Uh, I have owned a salon, well I lease, not own, I lease a salon suite. Mine is called Salon Lofts. And yes, I'm a small business owner. I am a hairstylist and I do um, hair cutting, hair color, blowout, styling. That's basically what I do. I opened my loft in June. Uh, June 12th of 2017 and so yeah I started off with basically no clients I started off with it I would say with about maybe a good eight clients might have followed me to my new business and that's not really considered a clientele that's just eight clients so I am here to show you guys the facts and figures that it can be done if you don't have a clientele you can't build your clientele uh, so yeah, so let's jump right into it. So <clears throat> I moved in June 12th and um, I, as of right now on my client list, it says that I have 84, 81 clients, okay? 81 cl clients and I'm averaging about 42 clients a month. So that lets you know 
um, that I'm probably averaging about um, two to three clients a day. Um, when I first moved in my salon, I was working six days a week. My only day off was Sunday. I did that until from June till about October. Then I started working five days a week because you know I just kind of needed to you know give myself that extra day because I was kind of getting burned out a little bit. Yeah, but when I first opened, I was working six days a week. Uh, granted, when you work for yourself, um, you might be used to having set days that you don't work. But as an entrepreneur, when you are working for yourself, you do have to go harder and work harder than what you were doing for someone else because it's totally on you. So that was my thing. Um, you know, I'm, I knew that I had uh, responsibilities and obligations to pay as far as my lease payment once a week. And uh, just everything was just a lot of pressure which I feel like pressure is good because it gets the fire under you and work hard. So yeah, I was like, I'm gonna work six days. So that's what I did until about October. So for the, the month of July, it says I did, I, I went through my scheduler for you guys and I went through all the months and I looked at all my appointments and this is what I came with and then I just did the averages. So for the month of July, I had 38 clients so I was averaging about one to two clients a day, which is pretty good, um, being that I did not have any clients. And so you probably want to know, well, Amber, what did you do, girl, if you, um, you know, opened up and you didn't have any clients? So this is what I did. I, you can do this. You might can take bits and pieces and parts of it and kind of like, you know, work it to your benefit. But what I did was uh, for the week of opening the first week that I was open and for the first month to my clients who I was able to let know that I was opening up my own salon suite what I did was is I gave them a complimentary haircut and shampoo service just so they can come in and see you know the different level of service that I'm offering um, just the quality of customer service so they can ex experience what they're going to get at my new location and to let them know what the price is going to be because it was more than where they were coming from like a lot of my male clients you know they were used to paying $15 for a haircut and when I moved into my loft I'm now charging $25 for a haircut so I just wanted to so they could see okay this is the new price to see if you know if they want to have the option to pay for that um, and if they did come just to show that you know I appreciate them for following me to my new location because you will find when you move into your loft space or you start working for yourself and you're coming up from working for someone else a lot of your clients may not follow you especially if you were working at chain salons like I was you know I've worked at Great Clips and then from Glit from Great Clips I worked at a place called Mince Cuts but yeah the prices were pretty low it was kind of like um, you know especially when you work at Great Clips it's kind of like a almost like a chop shop basically like you cut in bulk like you try to cut as many people as you can and so the prices were 13 so a lot of my clients that I were that I wasn't able to let know who um, you know was at Great Clips a lot of them didn't follow me which was expected at Men's Cuts <clears throat> I definitely wasn't able to um, let to I guess I wasn't able to build up a clientele at Men's Cuts either just because I shouldn't even have said the business name but the place that I was working at I wasn't able to um, advertise myself so uh, I had to kind of like let them know like in a very you know I had to let them know in a way you know where I would get in trouble and so some of them followed me some of them didn't so yeah not everybody's gonna be comfortable with your new prices but that don't feel bad that they're not comfortable with your new prices because you know when you are going to that next level you have to adjust for all the new things that are going to occur. Moving on, so that's what I did. I showed my clients I appreciate them. Uh, most of them were like, okay, cool, I'm comfortable with this price, whatever, and they were fine. They were like, this is awesome. Okay, so that was how I did with my uh, clients that I already had. And so for clients that I was actually trying to get, what I did was in the area where I worked at, I was just going to different businesses. Uh, within that area and going to the managers and it's like hey you know I'm a new salon owner salon loft owner and I just opened my salon and I just want to give back to this uh, community you know as uh, business owners and I just want to offer your staff 
a free haircut and shampoo for like so many months day. So that's what I did. Now, would I do that again? I don't know. You know, it's just it was just a way to get my name out of there. I can say don't expect that much for peak clientele from that because a lot of times when people come and get a service for free they are not going to pay for it like a lot of the people that I cut their hair and they got the free service they were very appreciative they loved it but they were not repeat clients I think from probably like about a good 20 people that I did I would say only a good maybe four came back to get their hair cut maybe four so this is just a way to generate some income if you don't have any clientele when you originally open it's just a way to get your name out of there okay another thing i did is i was just out and about in my area where i work you know just passing out cards going to different businesses handing out flyers so a lot of footwork in the very beginning um is not for me it wasn't sitting in my salon all day waiting for someone to walk in um, I think those days are kind of passing by. Um, it can You can get walk-ins depending on what kind of city you live in and location that you're at that might work for you. But um, for me, I thought I would get a lot of walk-in traffic, but I didn't, but I wasn't depending on that. That makes sense. I knew that you know I was ready to work. So a lot of the times when I didn't have clientele, I was out passing, fly passing out flyers, that's not business cards. I was going to like the police department, the fire department. I was offering free haircuts to them. So this is just like the first month that I was open. I was just basically working with businesses, companies, work with police department, fire department, you know, government people, government businesses, and you know, make sure you're dressed really professional and just go in and say, hey, you know, I'm a new. Uh, my name is such and such. I'm a, a open up a salon and such and such. And I just want to show my appreciation and open in my business and offer your staff a free haircuts. You know, I did that with the fire department and uh, I got a decent turnout from them. I did it with the police department. Sometimes it also depends who you give it to because sometimes you, um, it depends on like the plug, like the, the person that you're talking to. So you just want to make sure when you go to these businesses that you're talking to someone with heavy influence who make sure they're going to get it out to the people. Because a lot of times I was hearing like when I would go to certain businesses like, oh, I didn't even know that you were doing this until like my coworker told me. So just make sure that you're getting this information, you know, in the right hands, okay, of people so that you can, you know, generate the income. So that's basically what I did. I went to a lot of businesses. I talked to a lot of the managers. I just like, you know, hey, my name's Amber. I'm a new salon loft owner. And I just as of my appreciation for opening up my business and to show that I appreciate you, I just want to offer all of your staff a free haircut and shampoo. I didn't offer free hair color, free uh, shampoo and style. I didn't want to offer anything that was going to make me come out of pocket with product. Um, just because haircut, it's just scissors and water. You know, the shampoo, I, I gave them a shampoo, but that's just one pump of shampoo, one pump of conditioner, and that's it. So to me, that was just, you know, I was willing to take that risk. However, I did not see a lot of repeat clientele from that. Again, I just want to let you know, be transparent. That was just a way for me to generate some income to save to put towards my rent. Another thing that I did that I don't know if I mentioned in my other videos was um, before I moved in my loft, I did get the information on how much my lease was going to be. Uh, the first four weeks, it was a prorated amount. And so I did make sure that I saved up for that amount the whole month. That way, when I moved in my loft, that it wasn't such a big um, anxiety. I mean, I was still had stress and anxiety, of course, but it wasn't like, um, you know, I wasn't so like, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? I gotta, I gotta hurry up and get some people in here so I can make some money to pay my rent. So it was like a, a little bit of a breather, you know what I'm saying? So as I uh, continued to make money, if I didn't make my rent, I would just leave that money in there. So I didn't, I wasn't able to pay myself either. Like the first month, wasn't able to pay myself. If I did, it was probably maybe fifty dollars, thirty dollars, twenty dollars, that kind of thing. Okay. For the month of August, I averaged 37 appointments. I had 37 appointments, so that was about one, one, one appointment a day, which is 
uh, which is expected for someone that's new, for someone that doesn't have a clientele, for someone that is trying to build a clientele. For the month of October, I had 41, 41 appointments, so I was averaging about one to three clients a day. Um, and that's when I started working five days a week. For the month of November, I averaged 48 appointments, so that was about two to four appointments a day. Um, and guys, for the month November and December, uh, they're more because that is like the holidays and a lot of people, you know, I was pushing referrals heavily. You know, when my clients would come in, I would say, hey, you know, I appreciate all my clients who refer other people to me. So I had like a referral program where anyone that referred me three clients, um, they got a $35 Visa gift card. Um, or if you refer me a client, like you're, you get a discount on your next haircut. Or if you leave a review on Google or Yelp, you got a discount off your haircut. So those are things that I did to, to bring in more clients. Um, I, I, I passed out like a ton of business cards. Like I know I've given out close to like 200 business cards. I would say anywhere from 150 to 200 business cards like the first two months of me moving in. And I didn't see a lot of return clients from that, which is okay because with any business, it takes time for people to come back. But I did see a lot of uh, new clients from referrals. So I would say for me, referrals has been the best thing that has worked for me and reviews online. Uh, so I, f I feel like um, gone are the days of walk-ins. Most people uh, kind of want to, they don't, they want to know what they're getting into before they come. You know, back in the day, people used to just walk in a salon, walk in to see if they could get an appointment that week or get their hair done that day. But I feel like that kind of thing is kind of dying a little bit because of just the strong presence of social media and just reviews with Yelp and Google. So I feel like a lot of people kind of like to do research before they go to a place, which is why I make sure that I'm on Google, that I'm on Yelp, and that, you know, I always tell my clients, hey, if you can remember, because a lot of clients do want to leave reviews, but they forget, you know what I'm saying? Even myself, you know, when I go to a restaurant, I like to leave reviews when I'm like, oh, I'm going to leave a, a rave review for this place and I get home, you know, I forget. So if someone can remember and actually do a review for me, like, I really appreciate that. I really go out of my way to show my clients I appreciate that. So yeah, that's what's helped my business is reviews on my uh, Salon Lofts page, on Google, and on Yelp. Those are the things that help me. Because uh, when I get new clients coming in and I'm like, hey, how did you hear about me? They're like, oh, you know, the review had great reviews. Um, that's mostly what I hear when I hear new clients. Or if it's not a referred client from a client that I, that I don't already have. Okay, so for the month of December, it said I have 44 appointments. The month of December uh, slowed down for me a little bit because a lot of my clients came like right before Thanksgiving and in the very beginning of December. So I still had a good month in December. I was able to um, take time off, which was a blessing uh, this year. Uh, this year was just amazing. Yes, I had a lot of sacrifices. Yes, I took a sacrifice in my income than what I normally make but it was worth it because when I was working for someone else, granted, yes, I was making money, but it wasn't the money that I wanted to make. Um, so again, the sacrifice this year was I hardly was making, being able to pay myself. If I was paying myself again, it would be anywhere from $50, maybe $100. The most I was able to pay myself, I would say, would be, would be a little over $200. And yes, I have had the support of my husband. I am married. So if you do have support for family members, or from a, a husband or a spouse while you're trying to dive into this business, I think that it will be very helpful in your business journey. But if you don't, still don't let that stop you. Just try to come up with a way um, where you can do what you gotta do to do what you wanna do. So yes, the month of December slowed down for me because a lot of my clients only come to get their hair cut right now um, once a month. So yes, it means that I'm still working on building my clientele up. Um, December did slow down for me when it's supposed to be a month that kind of, you know, you're like overbooked, like it's crazy. But um, 
I did have a good week that week before Christmas and I was able to take a couple of days off and I was able to pay my rent a week in advance because I knew I would be out of work that week. So I did sacrifice the, the, all the, the money that I made before Christmas. I just kept that money. I did the responsible thing, which I would recommend. I just kept that money, um, to put that money towards my rent and I did not pay myself, okay? And anything after that, I was able to pay myself. So yeah, so yeah, let's do a quick recap. Um, moved in of June. For the month of June, I didn't say that when I had 34 clients. The month of July, 38. The month of August, 37. The month of September, 48. The month of October. October is, is a slow month in the hair industry. It kind of slows down a little bit after school. So um, for the month of October, it went from, from September, 48, October, 41. Then November is the holidays, it went back up 48. And then the month of December, it kind of declined. Again, my clients, most of my clients only come to get their hair done once a month. I only have one client that comes to get their hair done every two weeks right now. So yes, yeah, so I uh, average about 81 clients right now. And those are about 42 clients a month. That's two clients a day, that's eight clients a week. So yeah, that is my recap for 2017, which I think is not bad. Um, it's not where I want it to be, but I can't beat myself up uh, too much because, like again, I said, I opened my space with no clientele. Um, the first two months, I worked really, really, really hard. Uh, I always passing out business cards, always making flyers, always posting on Facebook, always posting on social media. Um, always talking to people, letting people know what I do. So I did that uh, for a lot. And then after those first two months, I started to, you know, see people come from referrals. And um, yeah, so I, I hope that next year I will have an extra, I would like a, another 80 clients. And I think that would be wonderful. Um, yeah, I would, I would like 300 clients. I think 300 clients is, would be enough for me. I don't have a big space. I'm working with a small space, so I can only take one to two clients at a time. So yeah, um, I just want, I just hope this encourage anybody who doesn't have a clientele like me and you want to open up a loft space. It is very, very doable. You just need to make sure that you put your work with your faith and your faith with your work and you just work hard and do the best that you can and God will do the rest. A lot of times, you know, I'm in here and I'm like, okay, Lord, <coughs> you know, I'm looking at my appointment my scheduler online and it's looking kind of empty and then you know I'll just pray about it and have faith and make sure that I continue to post and engage and meet people and God always makes a way. I have never been late with my rent since being in my salon and that is just a testament and a testimony to the grace that God has given me to follow my dreams and my heart. Uh, you know two years ago that was my prayer I was working at Great Clips. You guys, I'm sorry. Like, this is why I didn't make videos because I'm still getting over cold. So, yes, two years ago, my prayer was to be able to come from under the, the stress and the drama that I was in and to be able to have a career that I love to do. I didn't know if it was still going to be hair because I was just getting burnt out. I was thinking that, you know, this hair thing you can't make money in because of, you know, certain companies try to take advantage of hairstylists. So I was kind of on that verge. So I was like, I didn't know what it was going to be, but I was like, you know, God, I just want to be able to make money, provide for my family by doing something that I love to do. And I just want to be happy. And that, and that was my prayer for about a year or two. And look where I am now. So yes, that is just my personal testimony that please don't ever think that it's too late to do what it is that you want to do. The perfect time is always now. Faith is not about time. Faith is about uh, believing and hoping those things which are in your head, your dreams and your goals. That is what it's about taking those from your mind and from a dream to reality. So I just want to encourage you guys to um, don't let certain things hinder you or stop you. Don't let not having a, a clientele stop you from, you know, work going out and working for yourself. Um, don't let your environment, your friends, your family, none of that stop you from 
working for yourself. I can tell you that when I told some people that I was going to come to a place like this and they asked me how much it was, you know, you know, they were like, wow, Amber, you know, that's pretty expensive. You know, that's that's a lot of money. But to me, I was willing to take that sacrifice and that jump because I knew that I, eventually I was going to have more. Yes. Uh, I've made a sacrifice this year by taking a pay cut, by not getting paid myself at all, by not doing some of the things that I want to do. But on the pros, I was able to spend more time with my family. I, I have peace of mind when I wake up in the morning. I don't have anyone standing over my shoulder. I'm more creative. I get to do the things that I want to do. And people pay me to do something that I love to do. So yes, uh, I just I don't want to give you any false hopes and dreams that you know when you go off working for yourself that it's only going to be all stars and glitter because it won't be. Um, just that freedom is 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 priceless. Freedom is priceless. Freedom is not free, but it is priceless, and it feels really good. I can tell you that, and um, I can tell you that you're going to have to work really, really hard. I can tell you that you're going to have to work harder for yourself than you are for someone else, but that's the point, right? If you're going to bust your butt for someone else, why not bust your butt harder for you? So for 2018, I just envision myself just being where I want to be, my goal for um, as a salon owner uh, is to, to bring in two to three thousand a week that's what I would love to do I think that would make me happy and if I could go beyond that that would be even better um, I do want to increase my clientele lately I've been getting a lot of color appointments and I'm gonna make a video about that about how color is like your money maker like if you're not dabbling in color if you're not doing color you're missing out uh, color is just will get you to that level that you want to get as a hairstylist and as a salon owner it is the top dog of hair services um, yeah so I hope this encouraged you guys I'm sorry the video was super long I just wanted to be detailed as I can with the recap of my clients I know I'm always telling you guys I came and opened my salon with no clients and now I have a client list of 86 and um, every now and again I'll go in and, and see who's coming and not but again that's another video because this video is getting long but yeah guys just never give up just um, if you're thinking about doing this go ahead and do it if you want information and you want a contact person of somebody to talk to and you want to lease a space through who I lease through let me know and I will give you a point of contact for somebody to talk to you don't have to be in my state to um, lease through salon lofts they have salon lofts all over the east coast um, and just remember to, 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 to take your dreams from a dream to reality. Just work hard. Trust God. Ask, ask Him what it is that you want for your life. Trust Him and He'll do that because um, it's not just me. You know, I, I do my best. I want to give 120% to my clients. I go above and beyond. But I can't leave God out of the equation because He is certainly uh, helping me and showing me favor and grace on my life to do the things that I do. So all the glory and honor goes to him. I hope this video has encouraged you. You guys have a wonderful 18th. We're going to beast out 2018. We're going to conquer. We're going to do things that we never did before. 2018, I just know it's going to be an awesome year. I'm so glad um, for everyone who subscribed to my channel. Thank you for the positive comments and the feedback. It is so encouraging. You guys are encouraging me. You have no idea. I love you all. I hope you have a wonderful week. And um, now that my cold is not as bad as it was, I hope that I can continue to get back and start cranking out these videos for you guys and helping you with any business questions, salon questions that you may have. Now let me know if there's other stuff concerning like products that you want to know, tools that I use, whatever it is. Just let me know what you want to see on my channel. I'll try to have that for you. I love you guys and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.